we got a chance to be on Storyteller Row at the 2023 More Expo, which provided an incredible opportunity to meet patrons, subscribers, as well as other creators. In the few moments that we had free, we snuck off to check out some gear that I'm interested in for the next build. Let's check out Power Brake, which are some next level brake systems for overland vehicle builds and perhaps the best choice out there for us. Hey guys, so I'm here with Delon at Power Break and I'm asking questions because of my new truck build that's coming along. And so I had questions for him and so I figured some of you guys would benefit from this information. So I'm basically asking questions about how long it'll be before we see some of these products coming out for the newer generations of vehicles. So uh, first we're just gonna touch base on Power Break and what they are and then I'll ask some specific questions for the truck build that I'm gonna have coming up. So I'll let you take it from here if you'd like. Yeah, thanks Tyler, appreciate it. So Power Break, we specialize in off-road and four by four brakes. We manufacture everything in South Africa and then we're based out of North Carolina in the US. So it's just a complete bolt-on solution for four-wheel drive overland trucks. And it really is, it's, it's something that gives the vehicle a personality. Obviously, we're all adding a lot of weight to the vehicle. Mm -hmm. We've got bigger wheel and tires. So we want to just manage all that additional heat There's and energy that gets created. So if you come in and have a look here, so the first thing we start with is a caliper. So we have a six piston caliper. What's really nice about it is we have this big bridge over the top. So it stops the caliper wanting to spread itself open. And then if you go over on the edge, everything has temperature measuring on it. So we know exactly what temperature the brake systems run to. We have recessed bleeder screws. So if a stone or anything comes through, it's not gonna rip off the bleeder screw or anything like that. We bolt from the back. So we give you as much wheel clearance as possible because if you're running bead locker wheels or anything like that, we want to, we want to give you that wheel space inside stainless steel pistons not aluminum so you transfer heat a lot slower to the brake fluid sitting in the caliper and then we have we don't have these rubber boots that are going to burn away so they crumble with the heat and then they burn away and when we off-road all that muck, muck and junk is going in towards the the pressure seal so we do an internal wiper seal everything is internally ported so there's nothing sticking out that can get damaged and ripped apart on the on the uh, caliper and the reason we do a six piston caliper is because we want to run a much bigger brake pad. So if you look, this is a Tacoma brake pad versus ours. Wow. So if you look at the size of the friction material, it's just a much bigger area and that allows much more friction surface so that we can, you know, friction is what, what gives you the braking. So we want to have that available also for life and performance. You know, there's only so much you can do with a little yep. brake pad like that. Um, and then coming towards the Coming towards the, the rotors, we do something really unique. Uh, we have a 48 curved vein rotor, which is, acts like a centrifugal pump. So it's gonna suck air in, and we wanna flow air over it as quickly as possible. You know, brakes are a bit strange because it's self-defeating. Mm -hmm. The slower you go, the less airflow, obviously the more temperature. So if you're wheeling out there and you've got no airflow and you're coming down a really difficult technical area, we wanna give you more storage capacity. So it's also a bigger rotor, and that, that's almost like a glass of water. We want to give you as much storage capacity before you get heat soak. And then, Tyler, what's really good about this is we have temperature measurement on every single rotor. So that allows us to know exactly what temperature you've run the brake system to, and that allows you to make informed decisions around the correct brake pad compound. So how does that work? How does this gauge yeah, work? Yeah, so this is basically 500, 850, 950 and 1100 and it allows it will change color okay. so it holds the highest temperature that the brake systems ever run to and that gives you it'll turn white and so it's very visual when you pull the wheel off again it would have told you what the temperature range is that you've run the brake system to that's incredible yeah and it's a complete bolt-on solution so it comes in a kit left wheel right wheel in a box and you can see here on this tundra uh, it basically has everything you need. It has the bracket components, it has the, the rotors, the stainless steel braided lines, all the torque specifications, everything comes in it. We give you the little breeder tool, we give you the little uh, the tube that's going to come out. So really just a complete bolt-on solution. And I think with um, overlanding and 4 by 4 brakes, there's never been like just somebody that focuses on that for this industry. No, not at all. So we just like to be a part of the community. We wheel a lot, we're part of that. The company is 18 years old, so it's really, wow. we're well established, we manufacture everything ourselves. So it's just a, 
it's just a, a, a really good solution for, for, for stopping the vehicle, your family, your weight, every, we all invest a lot in the trucks, so it's just good to have that ability to stop the truck. Yep, definitely important to be able to stop that thing. And so as far as this goes, you do, I'm sure on some vehicles, you're gonna to need to upsize your wheel. Yeah, so what's really nice on the midsize trucks, like a Tacoma FJ 4Runner, You've, we fit under a 17 inch wheel. Okay, that's awesome. So we've, we do a lot of work in terms of making it as compact as possible. On the full size trucks, you do have to run an 18 inch wheel. So a Land Cruiser 200, uh, you, need to, you don't run the 17s, you've got to fit in. We need the 18 inch wheels. Okay, cool. And this is just a beautiful piece of hardware. No, thank you. We put a lot of work into the engineering. Yeah. Every We use finite element analysis to really get all the rigidity and the strength in the caliper. We want to give you that modulation and that feel when you're braking so that you can really control the brakes. So a lot of, we obviously do a lot of work on brake dyno testing and that type of stuff, but then we also have to bring the human element into it. Mm -hmm. And that allows you just to give you that feel and that, that ability to understand what's happening down at the brakes. Okay. And then these are only front end kits, right? So the big brake kits are front end kits. Okay. And then for the rears, uh, we do what we call our D-line. And our D-line is a high, same material rotor and then a, the same material high performance pads, but you keep the original caliper. Okay, yeah, because the, for the people that might not know, your front end does basically almost all of the braking. So Yeah, we usually say to customers, 75% of the braking happens up front. Yeah. The rear is really important as you get onto the brake cycle because the weight transfer has to happen pushing forward. Right. And so that the rear does play an important role. But then once that brake sort of transfer, weight transfers happen, starts pushing forward. Okay. Man, that is a good looking brake system. And then I notice you're not doing the drill because you're not you're not wanting people to drive through and crack if they're driving through water, sorry. Yeah, so the main reason on off-road vehicles that we don't want to do the drilled is if it picks up a small pebble or stone or anything like that, we don't want it then ripping up all the, the brake pad material yeah, and so on. Yeah, problem. Uh, and then drill does sort of start to crack around the drill port. Yep. Um, Porsche started drilled in the 80s, but you'll see even on any high level Porsche like track day car, they go to uh, slot to drive to again. Okay. Yeah, and they seem like the, the drilled systems only get built up with mud anyway, so they're just a problem for yeah. the off-road truck. Yeah, so we feel that this is the right technology. So we, we often see a, like a, 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 people selling for off-road vehicles drilled full of holes. We don't believe that's the right way to go. Awesome. And so as far as, um, how many miles do you get out of these things before they need like an actual rebuild? Because I know a typical caliper is going to need a rebuild, but because you're not using all the, the rubber gaskets and stuff like that, I'm sure they go for a very long time. Yeah, mileage is really extended by, by going with the bigger brake kits. I remember you're also running cooler. Okay, and, oh, right. and heat is always our enemy in a brake system. So the cooler we run, the, 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 the more things start to last, right? Okay. So we always want to manage that heat. And that's the goal of what we're doing with a big brake kit. A big brake kit will stop you faster on the first stop. But what it's really about is when you're coming down that mountain pass yep. and that truck's in front of you, that's where it really starts earning its money, yeah, right? Definitely. Um, so I always say to people, uh, it, it really is about the longevity is one side of it, but it's also about being able to have that performance when you need it on that fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth stop coming down a mountain. Okay. You know, also a lot of our customers daily drive their vehicle. Yep. And you never know when that highway is just going to come to a stop. Bigger wheel and tires, a lot of extra it's rotational mass. Difference. Right. So if you go to a 33 inch tire on a 4Runner, for example, you need 38% more brake torque wow. to stop that rotational mass with a bigger wheel and tire. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's incredible. And then as far as, um, I know that these are available on basically all the Toyotas here in the United States. What other manufacturers do you make these for? Yeah, so we do all the Jeeps okay. as well. And Gladiator has really changed Jeep for us because now people are adding a lot more yeah. weight. And then we do the Ford, uh, we do the Ford Broncos. We do the uh, Ford Rangers. We do the F-152. So okay. Ford Range, uh, so the Ford uh, program. So it's basically Ford Toyota and then the Jeep side of things. Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. So that covers a lot of the off-road industry. Yeah. Yeah, that is quite a, a fantastic looking product. I've looked at these before, but I've never really gotten time to talk with you up close and figure out all the details and stuff. So I appreciate your time with this. Uh, great meeting you guys today. Uh, yeah, you too, man. All right, Thank thanks you very Tyler. much for your time. Cheers. Most of the questions that I had were answered by DeLon's presentation, but one that I didn't cover here was how long development could take for some of the next generation trucks that we'll be releasing next year. And the answer is three to six months for those new trucks. I will be keeping a close eye on Power Brake as I was nothing but impressed with what this company 
has created. This kind of stuff is like, especially with the US spec stuff. As always, thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road, and overland related content.